The Enduring Voices project team has spent the last couple of weeks in New Guinea, especially working in the Karawari River Basin area. And Papua New Guinea is one of the most fascinating linguistic places in the world. One of the reasons we wanted to come work here was to take the pulse of some of the world's smallest and most endangered languages, and there are many languages in Papua New Guinea that fit that description. The Karawari River Basin is a special place because it has a very dense mosaic of languages. So you can visit a small village and they're speaking one language. Uh, you can go one mile up the river and they're speaking an entirely different language. And then you go two more miles up the river and they're speaking yet another language. And so despite the ease of communication along the riverways, this has not led to homogenization of languages. Each village along the river has maintained its separate linguistic and ethnic identity. And it's been a puzzle for scientists about why we have such great linguistic diversity among relatively small population. Most of the languages in the Karawari River Basin in Papua New Guinea have small numbers of speakers ranging between 500 and 1,000. Some of them are even much smaller. Many of these languages are also endangered and are beginning to show signs of what we call language shift, which means that the youngest generation, the children, have a passive understanding of the ancestral language, but they don't, they don't speak it. They won't speak back. Their parents may speak to them in the traditional language, but they'll answer back in Tok Pisin, which is the national language of Papua New Guinea and the language of schooling. We visited a number of small language communities in the Karawari River Basin, and we asked them about how they view the future of their language and what's happening to their languages. Several of these communities expressed their concern that their children were not learning the languages. And they have some ideas about why that may be the case. The leading idea seems to be that when the children from one village that speaks one language attend school with children from another village that speaks another language, both groups of children feel a strong pressure against using their village languages and towards using Tokpisin, which is the national language, and also English. And so both of these groups of children who have been sent from different villages, different languages, to attend school together, take this language ideology back to their villages, and they essentially make a decision for the entire village that they're going to switch languages. Now the older generation in these villages expressed their extreme concern about this state of affairs because they see the future. They see that unless something changes, their language may go extinct. We got some specific requests for help from the leaders of two villages where the Yokoyam language is spoken. And what the village leaders of the Yokoyam people told us, I'll wait for that boat to go by. <laughs> 